Democrat Joe Biden has been elected as U.S. next president. Media said this on Saturday, defeating Donald Trump and ending a presidency that convulsed American politics, shocked the world, and left the United States more divided than at any time in decades. With this development, Trump becomes the first one-term president since Judge H.W. Bush at the start of the 1990s. Biden, who got the vote of a record more than 74 million people, was hunkered down with his running mate, Kamala Harris, in his home, Delaware. Late Friday, he delivered an address urging Americans to come together as a nation and heal. The Secret Service has already begun intensifying its protective bubble around the president-elect, who will be inaugurated on January 20. Meanwhile, President Donald Trump said his campaign would begin challenging U.S. election results in court next week after media outlets called the race for Democrat Joe Biden, saying this election is far from over. We all know why Joe Biden is rushing to falsely pose as the winner and why his media allies are trying so hard to help him. They don't want the truth to be exposed, he said in a statement. Recall that Trump has repeatedly made unfounded claims of fraud in the election. Joining us now to take a look at this, we have uh, legal practitioner Olu Osha. Also joining us is Eli Eweka, uh, social commentator. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us on the news. I will start Thank with you, you Mr. You. Osha. Yeah, thanks for having us. Uh, talk to us about the sentiment. Has he been announced winner or this emergence is as a projection from the media? Um, is, is that a question for me? Okay. Well, um, so, so the, the way they uh, announce who the president is, is, is kind of funny. So it is by custom. The major networks... Uh, since 1848 is the Associated Press. You know, they've been gathering and counting the uh, elections. And so it's the custom that, you know, on elections day, uh, the major networks, you know, they do their projections because, you know, the counting of the ballots is open and they can tell, you know, with the exit polls what's going on. And so typically uh, the major networks, they project and they make the announcements. And um, that's how we all get to know. So it is sort of a quasi-official way to do it. Um, we've had a situation when in 2000, uh, they called it wrong, the uh, networks called it wrong in the time of uh, Al Gore and George Bush. And um, so I guess they were a little bit um, hesitant, they were being very uh, cautious this time around, but it was very obvious, the, the writings of, on the wall, mathematically, uh, Joe Biden, it was known since yesterday that he would be uh, the president. So this is quasi-official. Uh, the states still have to certify the ballots. That happens weeks after, but we already know, and um, they're going to be going through the transition. All right, I'll come back to you with the same question I'm going to put to Mr. Eweka now. Um, Mr. Eweka, did you expect this result? Um, actually, you know, thanks for the question. That's a great question. So um, it, was, it was anticipated because... Um, the Republicans during the uh, during the campaign period, they encouraged the, you know their party members to go out there and I mean to go ahead and submit uh, their uh, mail-in ballots pre-vote before the election date. So which they did. So as of the third of November, 100 million people has already voted. About 70 percent of those votes were Democrats. So in a sense, it was kind of like possible that they might win the election. And then secondly, so you have more women voted this time around. Uh, you have more African-American women voted this time around. And the fact that you have a, a first person of color on, on, the, uh, on the election. So there was a good chance Joe Biden might probably win. Now, of course, uh, Obama was also out there uh, campaigning. So I think the biggest challenge was the, uh, the COVID-19, the pandemic. More than 230,000 people have already died. And the fact that the president, the president refused to take responsibility for what happened. So it was obvious that more than likely he was going to lose the, lose the election. Okay, um, back to you, uh, Mr. Osher. Well, um, you know, we all hoped for it. You know, um, 
I, I was actually making phone calls for uh, Joe Biden's campaign. I was uh, canvass canvassing, making phone calls uh, during, you know, to, to Michigan. And the polls already indicated long before the day of the election that Joe Biden was led by about 11 points, you know. Uh, but um, as, you know, as, as, you know, um, as he just said, uh, because the Democrats actually were, because of the pandemic, uh, they encouraged, um, you know, their, their supporters to vote early to do the mail-in ballots and to, you know, to go in there early, use the mail-in ballots and absentee ballots. While the Republicans and Trump especially, he was discouraging people that, to use the mail-in ballot, but to go in on that same day. So uh, while we anticipated that Joe Biden would win by a landslide, as the um, results started pouring in after elections day on that day, um, there was a little bit of trepidation as initially, you know, um, what's his name was it was ahead, uh, Donald Trump. And so I remember I was feeling concerned. Uh, but the reason why that happened is the rules were that the people who come in per person to vote, you, you count their ballots first and then you count the mail-in ballots last. So that was the situation in many states. Uh, the the elections uh, body is run by individually, by, separately by each state. Each state has their own election governing rules in their bodies. But um, I I expected it yesterday because you're seeing, you know, it, the 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 counting is 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 open and there's an exit polling, so we're seeing it. And uh, mathematically, uh, there were many paths to victory for Joe Biden as of yesterday. We could see it uh, while Donald Trump was running out of options, and we saw him. Um, grasp at straws by claiming that you know um, uh, you know we could see anticipate how he was feeling when he was claiming that there was fraud involved and which was of course specious you know that was him just gaslighting the American people again and just telling brazen and baseless lies and so we could see it and we're just waiting for the major networks to report it and actually two minor ne ne um, media called it yesterday. Okay. Business Insider called it, declared that uh, Joe Biden, will, you know, was projected as a winner uh, yesterday. All right. Let's uh, bring back Mr. Ewekam. I, I want to ask you the reaction from Donald Trump. Some say he had set the tone for the reaction we are seeing now as regards this election. He's consistently maintained that uh, counting mail ballot um, was going to undermine the credibility of the election. And since both parties are saying they're heading uh, to the courts, uh, what are you expecting uh, from uh, Donald Trump in the coming days? He obviously hasn't um, showed that he is likely to accept this result. Well, I think the, I think the issue with Donald Trump is he lacked the, the simplest sense of the, uh, decency. And secondly, he is ignorant of how the system works in the United States, even though he was born in the United States. So he has no best, basic knowledge of how the system works. And so pretty much even during the uh, why the vote would be counted. So he said that the people, uh, the Democrats in, in Georgia, they've already stolen the election. OK, that's really silly because Georgia has a Republican as the governor. And also as a Republican, as the Secretary of State. So that right there tells you he has no clue what is going on. So, yes, it is possible to go into court. But I think one of two of the uh, his challenges has been, has been tossed out. So there's a good chance the rest will be tossed out. Uh, what happened is that by the 20th of this month, uh, the, the state has to certify the election. And by the 14th, I believe, of December, the electoral college has to be to choose the next president. So in a sense, Donald Trump already lost because the margin is so big that uh, the chances of Donald Trump being reelected is almost at 5% uh, or zero. All right, um, Mr. Osha, can you talk to us about the margin of win? Did you expect um, what became, I mean, I mean the popular vote? Uh, we had polled massively. We thought there would be a very wide margin. Of course, the polls were showing uh, that it would be 12% or more, right? But right now we're seeing that it's the, the margin in popular vote is about 3%, so it's less. So Donald Trump did do much better. Surprisingly, we, uh, um, I, in fact, I, I, the Democratic Party is going to do a lot of soul searching and um, they're going to have to realize, um, yes, we're, we're very polarized as a country right now. And, um, but, you know, given that Donald Trump has not been a good president, given the, it was a pandemic that sort of helped, 
Joe Biden, unfortunately, that we're seeing that it, it sort of really helps him because yes, three percent is not twelve percent. Uh, it's going to go wider. You know, they're still counting. You know, these are projections, and we know. You know, we can tell. There's no way back for Donald Trump to win anymore. You know, it's it's, it's mathematically impossible. And um, that's why he's trying to go to the courts. But uh, it's not the courts that decide our elections. It's the, it's the votes, the American people. And we've already voted. Um, he's making frivolous allegations of fraud. So, yes, but we will see as the counting goes on until it ends that the, it, it might widen a bit more. We might see 5%. Right now, it's a 3% margin. Yes, it's not as large as the 12%, uh, but but it just shows that the country is very polarized right now. And um, we all have to, and this is what Joe Biden has to work on, uniting the, the nation. Yes, I am surprised that um, uh, he, he did he did do, uh, Donald Trump was still able to garner that many votes. All right, um, Mr. Oweka, what, what is the implication uh, for Africa, this election um, result as is being um, reeled out? Excellent question. So I think that the implication for Africans or Africa is that when Donald Trump was the pre well, he's still the president, when he got elected, so he had so many sanctions against African, you know, banned uh, African countries who were Muslims and a lot of crazy stuff. So I think with, with Democrats, they are, they are more, in a sense, more smarter than the Republicans because they have a holistic plan compared to the Republicans. So I think this chance is better uh, there's a good chance that there'll be more dialogue be between African nations and the United States uh, because Donald Trump was more about me, me, me first and everybody else second. And in a global system, it doesn't work like that. So I see be having a female vice president, women are, women are more smarter and they think better, if I should say that. And the second, being Democrats, they tend to work more with Africans instead of against Africa. So I see a better uh, collaboration between African co uh, countries and the United States, and also more of a peace and stable uh, economy in the world as, as against what we have right now. All right, thank you very much, gentlemen, uh, for uh, joining us on the news and sharing your thoughts on the election in your country. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much for having me. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.